My gosh, that is, that's got to be the biggest Acura badge in the history of Acura, Tommy. It's like, remember the old Volkswagens, uh, the uh, camper vans, right? there, these big VW emblems on the front. That, you know, this is like a small plate. Look at the size of that thing. It is pretty massive. It's probably the largest in Acura history, but what we're looking at today is the new Acura MDX Type S. So this is the high-performance three-row Acura crossover. Yep, and we're gonna do a quick buddy review, give you the lowdown. We're gonna talk about what's good and what's not so good about this car, because most of it is good, but there's one thing that I can't stand an Acura has to fix. But let's start where we always start, and that's under the hood, Tommy. Well, so the Acura lineup is comprised of a lot of different sedans, a lot of different crossovers, and the one hybrid supercar. Um, this one, being the MDX, is the large three-row, and then Type S means that you've got a high-performance engine under the hood. So what we're looking at is a twin-turbo V6 with right around 355 horsepower, transverse mounted, and that is mated to a super handling all-wheel drive system. Yeah, so this kind of sort of would compete with the BMW X5 M line, you know what I mean? Not quite the M. Yeah, like that's the one right. that's got all the badges. It's not quite a full-blown, like, track-ready crossover. Uh, compared to some of the German competition, but or, it certainly is a lot better than like the A-Spec MDX, which is not all that special under the hood. Or, or maybe if you're familiar with Mercedes-Benz, you know, the 53 AMG, not the 63. So one of the uh, things that you criticize it for is you think it doesn't have enough power. You want the Type S to be like almighty conquering road devouring MDX. Well, the thing about the Type S though, is even though it may be down on power compared to some of those super high performance AMG vehicles, it's also pretty far down on price compared to some of those SUVs. So right now we've got this GLE at the office, 53, and that thing's like 95. As you see it equipped, this Type S, right around $70,000. So value wise, uh, it's pretty good. Now, other thing you'll notice here, pretty big gap, but that's because this vehicle comes with air suspension, um, height adjustable air suspension. You notice the big Acura Brembo brakes, part of the Type S group. Behind those, they should be 20 inch wheels. No, they're 21s, dude. 21s. We're rolling on 275, 40, 21 uh, cross contact continentals. And why don't you come out, out here with me, Case? I think Tommy's got it right. I mean, if you look at it from this side, there just seems to be too much space between. Uh, the top of the tire and the top of the wheel well. It's just like it needs to be like slammed or something. Well, luckily the suspension is height adjustable, so you could uh, lower it down in some of the sporty modes when you go faster. Now, what I like about the MDX is you still have a pretty squared off rear end. It's not going for one of those coupe-like profiles. It's pretty much horizontal and then vertical, which means you got a lot of trunk space. And this being a three-row means that you can seat more than five You know people. what I love? This is my favorite feature right here. Can you guess it? It's right there. Look at those giant and real tailpipes, quad tailpipes, Tommy. Quad exhaust, yeah, they yeah. look really nice. So back here, really good trunk space. And then putting up the third row is as simple as pulling a handle and then lifting a headrest. I really like how Acura has done that. Super easy to do. And then underneath, we got a little bit of extra storage. I think we were cleaning it up before we did this review and it's a little messy. And check this out, there's a little button here too, um, which will lower the rear end, just like a Land Rover Range Rover the air suspension so that you can easily get stuff in and out. Yeah, what I love nice. about you know Acura slash Honda products is that they don't sometimes over-engineer things, right? If this were any other vehicle, you'd have a button to fold down and maybe even raise up the rear seats, but here it's done in a much more um, basic way, one that will never fail, you know, because there's no motors. In case, do you want to shoot through the driver's side and the rear? I want to show kind of a cool feature. So as you see it right now, right, we got three abreast seating in the back, but one cool thing which Acura does um, that pretty much nobody else does is you can actually remove this middle seat altogether if you wanted more of a captain's chairs feel back here. Uh, you can also, of course, fold it down as well. So you got some uh, cup holders, a little bit of storage back here, and this rear seat is very, very good. Um, even if you're like six feet tall, like my dad is, the seat's basically all the way back. Pretty good room. And then I can also slide it forward and backward for the third row space. And speaking of the third row, let's go ahead and give that a go. One touch button. That slides forward. Even a kid could put up this third row of seats if they know how to use a handle. Better apparently, you than me, Tommy. Apparently I don't. And check this out, let's see how it is. Now your knees do stick pretty high up into your chest in the third row. And then of course you do start to run into headroom issues. So it's not quite as spacious back here as like a full size American um, truck based SUV like a Tahoe or a Suburban. But for a crossover, it's pretty good. Hey okay, so let me show you what I love. This is always one of my favorite features. I always feel like I'm you know, some celebrity or some VIP 
when I put the little uh, roller blind up and hide in the back seat. I know that's not what it's meant for, but that's how I feel. So I do like that. Uh, actually, let's go for a ride, Tommy. And why don't you put that back up so Case can jump in the back? Yep. Uh, and uh, we'll show you the interior. You got the key? I got the key. All right, hop in, Case. There you go, sir. Thank you. And I'll move my seat up because it's way back. <laughs> so there are some really interesting colors in the uh, Acura Type S lineup. I'm not so sure silver on blue is the choice that I would go with, but it certainly is a choice. What do you think? I like it, Tommy. I think it's uh, elegant uh, and uh, modern. I don't like piano black, and there's quite a bit of it. So I said there's one thing about this car that like, is a deal killer, uh, and that is, unfortunately, the infotainment. So there's this trackpad that you have to use. You can't do that, which would be handy and easy. You have to do this, uh, and when you're driving, Moving your finger across this pad, especially if the road's a little undulating, is a little on the tricky side. I think it makes it uh, difficult to operate. Now, the way this works is there's no cursor like the older Lexus systems. Instead, what you're supposed to do is basically manipulate the main screen using an iPhone-like feel with the small screen. So if I push on the left upper corner, it's going to select the left upper corner. Right bottom corner, it's going to select there. Um, it's not my favorite system, I do agree with you. Luckily, there are some hard controls for both volume as well as track selection. Here's my biggest problem, right? I'm used to a mouse, right? So when I first got in this car, right, I would move it over here. I would move it to where I wanted to, and then I would lift up my finger, and then I would want to push it, but that's not how it works. you got to keep your finger on it, and then you push it, and that's how you select it. And that is exactly the opposite way that you would use a mouse. So some other things which I do like in here, which are really good. I think this is one of my favorite steering wheels yeah, ever. great steering wheel. Perforated leather. This feels like an old school uh, Type R Honda wheel. Just the way it's designed and the way it feels is really, really good. I like the steering wheel buttons, easy to use. Got paddle shifters behind there. And then a fully digital instrument cluster with some configurability. Now when we change different modes, first of all, it makes a great little noise. You can see it in the middle. And then it also changes the instrument cluster. There's even a Sport S if you push and hold, which will wake things up. I think that's augmented engine note we're hearing. Yeah, did you see the, uh, the, the vehicle just lowered itself? Yeah, yeah, let me hit the camera button. Let's see what we got there. Pretty decent camera systems. Yeah. Now, other cool thing, I think this is the first Acura ever with massaging seats. And you can uh, select three different positions there. Got toggles for the climate controls, big drive selector in the middle. And then um, over here, got our hideaway USBs and then buttons for drive selection. I do agree with you, the piano black is way too excessive. Yeah, I mean, once, once again, right, you just lose fingerprints and it's a dust magnet. Uh, and eventually over time, this will become very dusty and you have to clean it too often for my like. They've I got a like, really yeah. good wireless charger, so some vehicles have two small trays. This is a nice, big, large and in charge tray. And I like this, the first time I saw that was in an Audi, but it's kind of from a power boat, right? It would be like a giant throttle in a boat. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a place to rest your hand in this car, but it just is a nice touch. I agree completely. All right, let's go ahead and give this thing a go, see what it is like to drive. Now, the air suspension is very dynamic in this vehicle and really has a pretty decent amount of up and down travel. So if you're traversing down rough roads, if you are looking to um, kind of tackle some, you know, light trails, you certainly can do that. Although a 21, they probably wouldn't recommend it. But then when you dial in a Sport Plus like I am now, things really firm up quite nicely, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, you give it the beans getting on the main road here. Let's see how quick it accelerates because you were a little, how would I say, disenchanted with the acceleration of this car. Let's see how the turbocharged V6 does. Shifts really quickly. Yeah, now, now switch it out of sport mode. Okay. Uh, and let's hear what it sounds like in like normal mode or yeah, comfort. Comfort, you ready? See if you hear the same engine mode. <laughs> it's probably hard to hear that. Yeah, but they are augmenting it. Yeah, they, they, they do a nice job of augmenting it. Now, it does offer a lot of potent acceleration. It does offer a lot of passing power, and it certainly is more fun than the standard MDX. It's just not, like, going to blow your socks off um, 0 to 60 at, a, like, a drag strip, which, of course, it was never really meant to do. So, Let's open this up. Let's get some, so some you know, sun um, in for case here. In the Acura lineup, the RDX and then the MDX are the two best-selling cars. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one, of course, once upon a time, had the super handling all-wheel drive. It still does. It does? Yes. So, it's torque vectoring. Yes, yep, it's got a fantastic all-wheel drive system. Um, one of the best in the industry. Man, you really have a lot of, lot of variability in suspension comfort, depending on the modes. Yep, it still has torque vectoring in the all-wheel drive system, which is excellent. Uh, one of the best all-wheel drives in the industry. Steering is really good for a crossover. The, the thing which is interesting about this vehicle is like, where does it fall, right? So, 
Um, uh, MDX is one of, if not the best-selling uh, premium three rows ever. I think they've, they, they passed a million sales of MDXs pretty recently. Well, there's no like sporty Lexus RX, right? Which yeah, also or be, L or RXL, right? Yeah, there's, yeah mm -hmm. that doesn't exist. So, and then uh, if you go down market, like there's no sporty Highlander, there's no sporty Subaru Ascent. There's not like an Ascent STI. Uh, there should be. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, the Infinity version, right? There's not like a Red Sport version. So it's kind of an interesting place. And then if you go extra premium, like X5, um, certainly you lose a lot of the practicality, and then you get a lot more power with the X5M, but a lot more price. So it's kind of an interesting place in the segment. Well, you want to pull over at the end of the road and we'll kind of wrap it up? Well, for sure. Yeah. Let's do that. I think it's a good idea. Um, kind of give us, you know, give the thumbs up or the thumbs down. The, you know, we used to do uh, buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. So you want to do that? Sure. All There's right. also the ELS premium sound, which I think is one of the best in the industry overall. Sounds very, very good. Yeah, uh, we can't show you that because it would infringe on all kinds of copyright well, laws. Well, I could play my copywritten free music. There's this one song I really like, which Case thinks is terrible but i just love it but do you do you think that this like uh speaker microphone uh combination would work i mean you know you're hearing me you're not it, it would not it, let's just say there's, there's there's not a great way to demonstrate the, probably not so no. hot no i think you're right all right let's go out and let's kind of wrap it up all right this lady seems very disheveled right now yeah she seems very intent on cutting you off for some reason all right all right tommy so um i like this car a lot uh, like I said, the one critical issue that I'd have a hard time uh, looking past is, of course, the infotainment. I suspect if you lived with it, you could look past it. So I'm going to give it a lease it. I'm going to give it a buy it, especially when you put it in Sport S mode. Look at that gap. You're complaining about the gap. Choo, look at that. Let's look at it from far. I mean, let me see the stance. I got to see the stance. Way better. Is it, is it much more? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's much better. Look at that. No, uh, I still, still, it needs like another inch of wheel. I do, I do like this car a lot. I think it's really, really well done. I like the performance. I'm not like blown away with the performance, but it's good performance at a fun, decent price. Well, guys, thanks for joining us. Remember, go over to alltfl.com because, well, we have a lot of YouTube channels uh, and uh, we have to keep those stocked with content. So that's the place where you can get all of it in one place, one-stop shopping. See you next time. Ciao.